Hey everybody, what's going on? Okay, I'm back for my next video. I'm going to tell you what cosplay I have been working on. So uh, again, this is one that's not super popular. A lot of people probably won't know it, but the ones that do, hopefully it'll be a really nice payoff. And uh, like I said, I've never seen it done before. So I want to get into that and show you um, what I have been putting together, as well as a quick shout out to my favorite zombie movie of all time, The Return of the Living Dead, which just so happens to be 39 years old today. So happy birthday to Return of the Living Dead and let's get into the new cosplay. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. So this is the new cosplay I have been working on. I've been trying to put together forever. And some of you may have guessed it if you've watched my videos in the past. I've made a few references here and there to wanting to try this. But uh, anyway, I'm first gonna show you the mask. Yes, there is a mask. And just see how quickly some of you will get it. There it is. So some of you may have guessed it right away. Some might not know, some might just go, is that like a Christian Bale mask? That looks like his eyebrows. <laughs> no. Truth of the matter is, as I'm sure most of you would know that are familiar with this film anyway, this is the Pentagram Killer mask from the first power. This is the mask worn by Jeff Kober. Um, I believe it is a mold from the original film used um, uh, mold if I'm not mistaken, or if not, it's a very good replica. Um, this is from a company that, that is called Masks by Vin. Um, Vin is great to deal with, awesome guy. He has uh, a store on Etsy. Um, I'm sure he's on, uh, I know he's on Instagram. I'm sure he's on Facebook as well. I don't travel on Facebook too much personally. It's it takes up too much of my time, so I kind of stay away from Facebook for the most part, but I'm sure he is there as well, and I'm going to leave his information uh, at the end of this video so you guys know where you can find this mask. Cause, yeah, it's a really creepy looking mask. I've always thought it was uh, kind of disturbing, you know, and I had never seen anyone who had a replica or copy out there until uh, a couple of years ago I found this uh, this fellow who goes by Ben. Um, who does them, but for a while he had stopped doing them and I had to wait a bit and you know, then timing is everything, right? When you can, uh, when you can afford to pull the trigger on something like this. Uh, this isn't too bad, it's not super expensive. I'm sure it's under, under a couple hundred bucks. Um, but it is a really nicely finished mold, it looks super good. So how I was gonna put together this Pentagram Killer outfit, um, was a little challenging um, so first I went to a whole bunch of different reference photos like photos like these here you know where you can see the type of clothes he had on there's you know I, I researched it's uh, it's sort of like a trench coat there's no belt it's almost like a tweed uh, it's hard to tell the color from many of the different shots and the stills but some of the best stills that I, I have uh, seen were right off of uh, the film, of course, when I paused it, and you could see that this thing was pretty much a grayish color, and sort of a, sort of a medium gray, not really dark, and not super light, but uh, that seems to be the type of coat it was. I was also watching for the collar to be similar, and the button placement to be similar, and it took a long time to track down um, a code that I finally found that was suitable. The rest of it is basically just a, a button up, um, you know, black shirt and black pants. So um, you don't need much more to go with it once you have the mask. Um, so yeah, really impressed by this thing here. And once you pair it with this double sided axe I already have right here, you're in pretty good shape because, of course, in the film, he uses a, a double-sided axe like this. Not covered in blood, but hey, that's okay. We can work with that. But um, because I already had that, because I already had this 
piece, you know, I thought, well, there you go, you're just about home free if you can put together an accurate outfit. Um, as well as, of course, I need a wig to have that kind of same hairdo that you had. I have a wig that I used in some of these um, test photos that I just filmed last night that I'm about to show you guys. Um, the wig that I have is, of course, a little too long, so um, it doesn't look quite right because of course his hair looks a little shorter and kind of just sticks out everywhere a bit in the film. Um, so I do have to figure out uh, a better wig than you know, the one I've had here for years. Um, and uh, I wanted to add another element from this film that was iconic. And you guys who know the film would know the scene I'm talking about and it is the scene where um, just after he put this thing into the wall, just put that axe back. Um, anyway, there is a scene just after he puts that axe into the wall where you know, he doesn't, doesn't have a, a weapon right away and he looks up and he grabs the ceiling fan and you know this iconic scene, of course, as he's walking down the hallway like this. Logan. So I really wanted to be able to recreate that if I was going to do a cosplay and have an actual ceiling fan, but I thought, how are you going to do something like that? Like, obviously, you're going to have to have something that's battery powered, has a motor. Um, so I don't know, I just, I was brainstorming and thinking about it for a while and I started looking for, you know, like a portable ceiling fan that would be battery powered. And most of these things out there are these tiny things that are about a foot and a half wide, you know, just, just tiny things. Then I came across one that wasn't too expensive, it was around 50 bucks or less, and it was, uh, it was a little over maybe two feet wide, and I thought, well, if I pick this up, I could always modify the blades, make them longer, like use pieces of cardboard or something, uh, something along that nature, but of course there have to be a lot of modifications done there, so I decided to pick one of those up and uh, I made a bunch of modifications to it. And of course, this is still a work in progress. There's still a lot of detail work that has to happen on this. And I don't have all the electronics hooked up right now at the moment, but uh, this is a little look at the ceiling fan that I put together. So as you can see on this side, you can see the original blades are only to here. So it's a much smaller ceiling fan, not nearly as big as something used uh, to replicate what's in the movie. So I have to kind of improvise, right? So I made them all longer. I cut them all out to this particular shape that looked, that resembled the shape and uh, attached them. Of course, the only problem with this is in the movie, it's, it's a four blade. And unfortunately, this is a five, but I couldn't find any four blade ones anywhere either that were going to work but perhaps in the future I can figure out something a little better but I thought when it's spinning anyway you're not really going to be able to tell how many blades it is as, as easily so not a huge deal but um, I just got it painted yesterday there's just a few coats on it right now um, and I rigged up this piece this is this piece I showed you yesterday it's actually a piece of uh, metal exhaust piping that just fits this perfectly and uh, it hides all my controls inside. I have wiring that is inside here that's going to attach to a uh, battery pack that I have. Um, it does work. I did already check it out and everything, but uh, I haven't rigged it all together because I, I still have to figure out how I want to do it because I have to use a remote control to turn it off and on. And I was going to just attach that to the side, but it turns out because of the sensor being in here, it won't uh, read the signal to turn off and on unless you're like right at it so I might just have to have the remote on me and turn it on you know uh, which isn't really a big deal I'm just hoping to uh, you know uh, to rig it that way but you know everything changes and you have to adapt as you go when you're into this cosplay and stuff so you can see the smaller blades on here where I've attached so on this side they look like full-length blades looks much better but of course when you're doing that 
and you make the blades so big, you have this tiny little centerpiece. And you know, the, the main turbine on these things are quite large, and especially the one in the movie, that would look rather ridiculous like that. So I thought, okay, well, I'll cut out a larger piece, raise it up so there's no blade interference, and uh, rig it up with the cap on top. And then I was gonna put the detail on for all the little slots all the way around, and there's like, there must be 20 of them. It's hard to count them all. In, in the pictures uh, that I have for reference, but there's a lot, so I don't know. So there's a lot of detail work that still has to go into it. Some more painting and finishing too, so it looks a little better. But, uh, you know, needless to say, it does spin, and it will when I, uh, you know, when I turn it on and need to use it, I can, uh, I can get that effect. And uh, it doesn't take up too much space, I guess, for a cosplay prop, but for the few people that will know it, Hopefully they'll, uh, you know, it'll put a smile on their face anyway, and uh, they'll get a kick out of it. Because uh, yeah, I've never seen anyone uh, do it before. And again, I really wish this was a four blade, but what do you do? You know, you have to go with what you, uh, what you can find. But perhaps in the future I can get a, a four blade that looks a little better, like I said. Okay, guys. Well, I've made you wait long enough, so. Here are some shots of me in the cosplay for the first time, mind you, okay? So it's still pretty rough. I know uh, I definitely need to get the right wig. The wig is way off. Um, but this is the first time I've had everything on sort of together, just as a test run. So um, still a work in progress, but here is a look at what it looks like right now. This is Patrick Channing, the pentagram killer from the movie The First Power played by Jeff Coburn. Take a look. Okay, so you can see it's still a work in progress. Yeah, the wig is definitely way off. Too long, for sure, and it needs to be more, you know, scruffy, like in the reference photos. There's quite a difference there. Um, as for the rest of the stuff, I'm pretty happy with it. I do have a different black button up that I might use uh, next time. Um, I did notice it is super hot wearing that coat, though, so that's gonna be tough at conventions. It's still going to be hot. Um, it would probably be great for Halloween night or something if I was out patrolling or walking around with it. I'd probably be nice and comfy because uh, our Halloweens are quite cold. Um, but anyway, uh, as you can see, work in progress there and I don't have the electrical hooked up to the fan just yet. But once I do have that all together, I'll for sure show you guys and as it improves and I get the right wig for it and stuff. But so far, uh, it's going in the right direction anyway and I'm pretty pleased with it. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you, have, do you even know the first power? Have you seen it? If you haven't, get out and see it because it's a great movie. Um, but either way, let me know your thoughts and uh, 
we will see you guys again for another video soon enough. Take care, guys.